Today I'm going to be doing an Apple Watch Series 5 for Teardown. I just went to the Apple Store and bought the new Series 5. You're going to see the unboxing and the immediate teardown of this, uh, this watch. I'm going to show you uh, start to finish, nothing left out. Um, I've seen a few tutorials online just to kind of see if I was the first to put one up and, and every single tutorial it seems like they skip stuff and if you're not really familiar with the way that the watches come apart you're not going to notice what they skip so I'm going to show you everything step by step so uh, hopefully it doesn't get boring but uh, I, I enjoy it so hopefully you do and I know that a lot of my subscribers are here because of all of the content that I have on my Apple Watch uh, series so hopefully you enjoy uh, this video um, if you enjoy it feel free to give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already um, also come follow me as I take this Apple Watch apart. So here's my brand new Series 5. Super satisfying to open up. A brand new Apple Watch. I love the way these boxes slide open. Now before we get to the teardown, I'm just going to do a quick test just to make sure that the watch that I got from Apple actually works. My test simply consists of making sure that the force touch works and that the touch all around the screen works along with the display being perfect. And if you hold your finger and drag it around, it'll stay with your finger until you let go of the screen. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take a pry tool. Now this pry tool is extremely thin and allows me to slide in between the glass and the frame. This pry tool is about as thin as a razor blade and yet it's not as sharp as a razor blade. Now as you might notice I'm doing this without any heat and that is because with heat you start to delaminate the, uh, uh, from my experience, you delaminate the uh, force touch um, sensor around the display. I'll also be using this little plastic sheet. So basically what I'm doing is I'm lifting the, the display just enough to expose sight under my microscope to the, uh, um, to the force. Um, touch which will allow me to use the plastic piece and slide in between the glass um, and uh, and separate it and break that adhesive bond that it has to the glass without a microscope this would be very tricky um, but it's the uh, most effective way to uh, remove the screen without damaging um, anything so carefully gauging my distance with the plastic, I will slide it around, uh, cutting in between that glass um, and the force touch sensor. And as I turn the corner, I need to be very aware of where the tip of the plastic is at because on either side of the short ends of the screen, there are super sensitive uh, flex cables that have been folded over. On one side, you have the display flex cable and on the other side you have the digitizer flex cable. Either one can be cut with literally anything, even this little piece of flimsy plastic can cut through it if you're not careful. So that's definitely where things can go wrong. Now if, it, if this glass was cracked, this plastic piece would not be sliding around as easy as it is right now. It would be snagging on all of the glass pieces. Now that I've made it fully around, the screen should be completely detached from the force touch sensor, which will allow me to um, lift the screen and examine for the first time on my, with my own eyes the Series 5, which looks just like the Series 4, except for a few things like this antenna I noticed right off the bat on the NFC uh, uh, pad there. It's the reverse of the Series 4. 
they've taken what was once on the inside uh, and put it on the actual screen. But as far as the rest of the display, it looks identical to the Series 4. So we'll go ahead and test it again, make sure I didn't damage the display or touch. Looks like the touch is good. One thing I'll also want to test is the force touch, so I'll try to line up the screen again so that it has pressure on that. And uh, if I can get it lined up just right, we'll also see that as we push down that it does recognize that I have that extra pressure on the screen, so we're good. Touch is all there, so we are good to continue with this teardown. Now I'll carefully pull at these flux cables. One thing that will help if you would like is to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to help loosen the adhesive, but I find that as long as I go slowly, the adhesive tends to let itself go enough for me to uh, pull this away and I'll gently peel the rest of it back as to not tear the, uh, the copper sticker um, that is over those flex cables. Now I'm going to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and some very fine tip tweezers to help uh, uncover the uh, the connectors from these stickers. Now the sticker right here, these are pretty annoying. They're very thin, easy to damage, and really in the end they're not really that important, but I like to maintain them if I can without, uh, without tearing through them. And as I remove each one of those from on top of the connectors, I'm going to be peeling back the copper a little bit to help with the reassembly down the line. I'm going to add a little bit more alcohol, um, on the isopropyl alcohol to uh, help loosen up uh, that adhesive so I can pull that sticker back. And once I have that I'm going to carefully disconnect each one of those connectors gently by flipping them up and then firmly and gently at the same time pull this, the connector away and all three should come out if I've disconnected all three correctly. Now that was the long-winded version of how to, how to do it, but this is where most people end up uh, damaging the, uh, the screen or the flex cables, so I wanted to show that in detail as much as I could. Next time I'm going to go around and clean up any of the old adhesive. Um, this is a little bit tedious and time-consuming, so I skipped through part of it there. Um, but it's basically, without scraping the force touch uh, sensor, going around just rubbing off with, gently uh, with the tweezers, those, the, those last bits of adhesive. And here I'll show a side-by-side -side comparison of a Series 4. The screens, they look very, very similar. That one happens to be broken. But that antenna right there on the inside is what they've sw switched over, as you might be able to see there. All right, next thing I'm going to do is get out a magnet mat and roughly draw the shape um, of the watch. It doesn't have to be perfect like mine. Um, <laughs> next, I'm going to take the screws out, keeping them in order. I realized after doing this... Uh, um, video that I put those screws at the top. They should have got at the bottom of my drawing, but I, I knew where they went in the end. So the, one of the first things you'll want to do is uh, remove the battery, and now that the screen is off, we can do that. I'll disconnect the uh, force touch because that uh, it happens to overlay the battery. Add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol under the battery, and with a pry tool, it should pop out which will expose a, uh, a, um, a sticker and screw that will allow me to um, pop out off the battery connector, uh, which is similar to the uh, uh, previous models with that Lego, Lego style connector. And then I'll go around and remove the screws that hold down um, the other little bits in the, in, inside the watch that are holding down uh, the antenna, for example, here and the uh, Taptic engine. And uh, at the same time, keeping in mind that each one of these screws needs to be kept in order. There's the little Taptic engine. Peel away the sticker that's covering up the uh, the bracket for the uh, 
the power button there and pull those two screws off along with the bracket. And then I'll unscrew the uh, bracket that's holding down the microphone there um, next to the, uh, the crown. And I'll carefully remove the two screws in the bracket that's holding the, the top part of the, uh, the, uh, the little logic board in there. And uh, at the bottom there are two other screws holding down a bracket as well. I'm carefully uh, pulling away all the connectors that will prevent me from getting in there. And I'm also going to remove the screws that are holding down uh, the other section on the other side which houses uh, um, the, another microphone as well. I'll pop off the uh, one of the antennas there that's surface mounted onto the, the board. And examine if any of the other uh, items in there are, are impeding the board from coming out. I remove the other two screws that are holding down that last bracket and carefully work the, that bracket out from behind the flex cables. This should allow the board to uh, gently um, pop up and out. And then it'll fold up and you'll see one more connector. Now, if you've, you may have noticed that I'm using my tweezers a lot for these connectors. Um, they are metal, and I'm fairly experienced. I mean, I've taken apart hundreds of these watches, um, similar to the Series 5, so I'm comfortable using that. If uh, this is your first time, never use metal when disconnecting anything. Um, that's why you might have seen me switch to my finger, because I was, I, I was actually uncomfortable around all those little bits down there in the center. But there you go. Uh, uh, torn down as much as needed. This uh, this watch will be uh, repairable in in many different ways. Most of the uh, um, the sensitive bits that are that, that do fail, other than the screen and battery, are still soldered to the to the the top side of the the board there. So it will require solder work to to fix them. But a, a simple screen swap and a battery should be fairly easy. But they they will still be expensive. And most of the time, it's just the glass that cracks, um, and so that that that's less expensive than getting it fixed. But um, I'll go ahead and reassemble it now, um, putting everything back where it came from. Um, I like to get this back together enough to test it. I will be doing another video following this one, and that's going to be a, a video that um, is. Uh, uh, hopefully entertaining. I'm going to be removing the glass from this display. Um, I know that the glass isn't broken and uh, if anyone's ever seen how these displays are removed it's severely uh, difficult um, to remove displays in general let alone if there are no cracks. It's much easier to replace the, di uh, the glass on a, on, a, um, on a display if the glass is severely broken um, but when it's not broken at all, it's extremely hard to get the display um, out uh, from inside the, uh, the glass because it's shaped like a bowl and you have uh, multiple layers to the screen that you have to guarantee that you are under and that you're not applying too much pressure. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. It'll show how the, uh, the screen comes apart on a, series, um, on a Series 5, which is similar to the Series 4. Um, Uh, I've already done it, so I enjoyed it, but uh, um, hopefully you guys uh, enjoy it as well. I should probably be putting that video out um, shortly here after this one.
being gentle when uh, connecting each of these connectors is, is a must because you don't want to bend any of the pins. And so making sure they're perfectly aligned is, is, is the way to go. Um, now you might see the light coming from up above. That's from my microscope. Almost everything that I'm doing here is under a microscope. It is extremely difficult to repair Apple Watches without one. Um, everything's so small and it's hard to see exactly what you're doing in such a confined space that if you don't have a microscope it's going to be a struggle to do any detailed repair um, especially um, the repairs like glass repairs and uh, any type of board repair um, any solder work in general on uh, small devices you should have a microscope anyway but uh, we'll go ahead and connect the battery up again Put back the bracket and the screw that holds back down the bracket there. The adhesive uh, is still um, there on the board and should re-adhere to the battery. Um, once the isopropyl alcohol uh, evaporates, the, uh, the, the um, adhesive regains uh, its, uh, its stickiness. Go ahead and put back all the last screws there. And I'm going to carefully peel away the flex cables from um, the... Uh, the copper uh, sticker there. Now on each one of these uh, flex cables there's little um, there's little wings that come out to the side that uh, allow for um, you to put pressure on um, to put into the connector. Try to point to them right there and there. Um, this is also where people go wrong um, when trying to reconnect them. Um, they uh, they scratch up the connectors like crazy trying to get these in because they uh, they don't want to slide in on their own um, so if you push on those wings uh, you, sh you should be able to do that and then carefully flipping over the connectors back down um, trying to fix the uh, the sticker there it got all bunched up in the process I might be able to smooth those out so I can give it a cleaner finish, but you know, details that don't really matter that much in the end. It's definitely hard to film and make sure you capture everything when you're looking under a microscope and can't see exactly what the camera's seeing at the same time, but Hopefully from uh, what you can see here you get the gist of how this is done. So I'll gently uh, push the flaps down on each one of those connectors and we'll go straight to testing it. We see a, an apple symbol, that is a good sign. And the last thing we'll do is we'll test the uh, the touch uh, function, the force touch, um, make sure everything's still working, that we didn't damage anything else. Uh, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't uh, subscribed to my channel already, go ahead and do so. Um, I will be releasing more videos um, like this in the future. Um, and look for that video on uh, how to do, replace the glass on the Series 5. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah.